Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Tourism Tuesday, Larray Page County Edition. So we are back on the screen with Edison Emmons from Larray Page Chamber of Commerce. Edison, you look like you've survived the holidays. So I guess that's a good thing, right? I did survive. It was very nice, not too relaxing, but still a really nice holiday. If it's too relaxing, you never want to come back to work. And then that creates a whole new set of problems. Exactly. <laughs> You've got Bill Huffman with you today from Lorray Caverns. And so, Bill, I'm going to start right off by asking you, is Christmas Day the busiest day at the caverns? Because somebody told me that a really long time ago, and I didn't know if it was actually true or not. We do get a lot of visitors on Christmas, believe it or not. I wouldn't say it's the busiest day. I'd say July 4th might be that day, sometimes in the summer. But it is busy. People celebrate or don't celebrate Christmas. We're open and we're happy to have them come. And we did have a good holiday period out here, for sure, when people are traveling back home or to see their families. And the cool thing about the caverns is it doesn't really matter what the weather is outside. As long as you can get to the caverns parking lot, it's the perfect degree inside when you get to the caverns. That is so true. It's a constant 54 degrees with high humidity, so it feels more like about 65 degrees or so. So it's perfect to come on a cold winter day. It's perfect to come in the summer too and cool down. So give me a little history for someone who isn't as familiar with Lorray Caverns. Tell me a little bit about how you guys got started. Sure. We were discovered on August 13th, 1878 by three local men. They were here in the valley living in Lorray. It was kind of an economically depressed time after the Civil War. And so they were looking for some way to make money. They knew of a cavern south of us that was open, making money and giving tours. And they thought, wow, if we could find one, we could do that too. So they spent a hot summer, August summer, looking around the hills of Loray. Finally saw an outcropping of rocks and thought that was an interesting little depression there. And they felt some cool air coming out of about a quarter size hole. Unusual on a hot August day. So they dug for about six hours until they had an opening large enough for the smallest man to go through. He had a rope, a candle, and slid down into Loray Caverns and discovered what they were actually looking for. How many times does that happen? And how brave do you got to be to be the guy who crawls in that hole tied to a rope with a candle in your hand? Exactly. Braver than me, for sure. (laughs) Braver than me with a flashlight and maybe even a firearm. (laughs) Exactly. Those guys were real pioneers. People actually thought they were crazy. They called them phantom chasers. People just in the community just thought that was the craziest thing, but they did it and found what they were looking for. So it was amazing. And how long did it take to go from finding that hole and getting in there to actually creating something that people could walk into and visit? It didn't take long. Surprisingly, you would think it would take years, but they had a small structure in November of that same year, on November 8th, and they started giving tours in that the same time. So you could come down and take a tour pretty close after it was discovered. Isn't that wild? That is crazy. And do you think that they were mostly tourists like today or were they people that lived in the area and had no idea this was beneath where they lived they did a good job in getting the word out so they got the word out in new york and people wanted to come and see this discovery of the century people called it so they did come from all over almost immediately to see the caverns now is it the same size today as it was back then and can it get any bigger We've explored it all, we feel, and so it's 64 acres of cavern. You do have a lot of rooms that the tours now don't go to, that you went to at that time. We've constructed the tour path in a figure eight, so you don't retrace your steps, and it's about an hour long today, so that's pretty much your attention span. Keep it nice and simple for folks. They used to go off these crazy little pathways and down lots of steps and through very narrow places in the caverns, uh, one way in or one way out. And that just wouldn't work today. It's much more enjoyable. Now, is it handicap accessible in the cabin in the caverns? We put in a new walkway in 2019 that is handicapped accessible. It will allow wheelchairs and electric scooters to come into the caverns. It does open it up to a lot of people who couldn't do it before with just the step. So there are no steps in the caverns. The caverns itself isn't listed as handicapped accessible because there are inclines, wet areas. It's hard to make a grade in the caverns that would accommodate folks, but people do it all the time. If you do bring a wheelchair, I always encourage you to have a strong person or two to help push it through. And if you're bringing an electric scooter, definitely have those batteries charged before you go. 
That's really good advice. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and caverns themselves are somewhat unique. I mean, they're not just anywhere. They are kind of specific to the areas that you find them in. It's true. There's a whole section of Beekmantown Dolomite that runs from Beekmantown, New York, all the way down to Georgia. And so that you have this karst region on the East Coast that is prime for caverns formation. And we're just lucky to live right here where we've got a, the most beautiful cave in the world. And the cavern's been owned by the same family for quite a while too, hasn't it? Yes, yeah, since 1905, it's been in the same kind of family and they do a wonderful job pushing the tourism forward here and making sure the infrastructure and everything is up to par and have a great guest experience. I've always appreciated that Luray Caverns, through that marketing vehicle that they have, has really put Luray on the map and in a lot of ways, the Shenandoah Valley as a whole, because you're marketing across the country, across the world, even in bringing people to this area to see the caverns that may not have come here otherwise. Exactly. We get people from all 50 states and we had before the pandemic, we were operating in about 52 different countries as well. It's amazing to live in Luray in a small town and get people from all over the world. It's really a great place to work and exposes folks here to lots of different types of folks. Do you hear a lot of the same things when people are coming for the first time? I'm guessing a lot of oohs and ahs and wows. Exactly. I love to hang out out front and hear people's experiences and people just say, that is the coolest thing. I wouldn't have expected how big it was down there. It's just really neat to see families connect. You can't use your cell phone down there, so there's no service. So you're forced to look at nature and to talk to each other. So it's a nice thing to see families respond to. It's nice to use your phone as a camera instead of there using you your phone to text or talk <laughs> on and not be in the moment. <laughs> exactly. I seem to recall one of the ads had a giant organ. Yes, we have the great stalactite organ. It was invented in 1954 by Leland W. Sprinkle. It was completed in 1957. It took him three years. He went around tapping on stalactites, looking for ones that were in the musical tone that he was looking for. Ran about five miles of cable. There's no great stalactite organ store, so all the stuff would have to be custom made, and we still do it today in-house. It, it's really a wonderful instrument. It covers three and a half acres, so it's the largest musical instrument in the world. When you go into the caverns, you're actually standing inside of it, and it produces this haunting music. I don't know how else to describe it. It's very unique, very contemplative, and just a wonderful compliment, and we get so much attention from that organ. We're glad it's there. Today, they wouldn't have allowed anybody to do that, and so we were lucky that it happened to when you could do that. So. Well, and it's interesting that it took them three years to build that and less than how many months to actually create and get into the caverns. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look, it's a little bit more technical on the organ side. And it's a, it, it is a unique instrument for sure. And uh, I encourage everyone to come here. What are your hours at the caverns? Sure. During the winter, it's a great time to come. I'll give you a secret tip. Now we're not that busy. So if you want to avoid the crowds in summer, it's the same case. So the hours right now are Monday through Friday. We're open from 9 a.m. and the last entry is at 4 p.m. And then on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday, it's 9 until 5. And then we'll change the hours beginning in April and it'll be 9 until 6. Which makes it nice because, again, much like the weather outside doesn't really impact the caverns inside, neither does it have to be daylight or dark when you're coming to the caverns. <laughs> exactly. It's a perfect time down there any season, for sure. Let's take a break. When we come back, the caverns aren't the only thing that is there on that property. You guys have a ton of other things that families and visitors can take advantage of when they're there. Can we talk a little bit about that in the next segment? Oh, I'd love to. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to do all of that when we come back. It is Tourism Tuesday, Luray Page County Edition. Edison is just intently listening to Bill and I, me being all <laughs> fangirl about the caverns. <laughs> but we promise, I promise I'm going to get him in the conversation when we come back. We're chatting with Bill Huffman from Luray Caverns, and we're going to do more of that in just a couple of minutes. Hi, I'm Ann Larson, a graduating senior at Mountain Vista Governor School, and we're partnering with local environmental nonprofit Sustainability Matters to help you help yourself while helping the planet. Here's your sustainability tip for the day. Think recyclable. Using bamboo utensils, cloth napkins, and bringing your own grocery bags to the store are super easy ways to practice sustainability. Another way to gain sustainability points is to ditch the plastic bags. 
If you're bringing lunch to school or work, consider using reusable containers for sandwiches and snacks. Not only does this practice diminish the amount of harmful plastic baggies you use, but eating with dishware from home is comfortable and easy. Switching to reusable dishes for packed lunches might even inspire you to think creatively and switch up your lunchtime routine. These small actions change little about your daily life while making big impacts on the planet. Thank you for listening. This has been an ecologically exciting message from Mountain Vista Governor's School and Sustainability Matters, reminding you that together we can keep the river clean and the valley green. Welcome back to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Tourism Tuesday, Larray Page County Edition. Edison Emmons is on the screen with me. He is with the Larray Page Chamber of Commerce. Joining him is Bill Huffman. Bill is with Larray Caverns, and we talked all about the caverns in the first segment. And I know that Edison said, Bill, before we started recording, oh, you can go ahead and talk to Bill. I used to work at the caverns. I know things. I think we should give him a pop quiz. Let's do it. I don't even know what question to ask. So ask Edison a question, Bill, and see if he still has the answer. Will do. What's the largest body of water in the cabin? Dream Lake. Good one. Good. How tall is the double column? Four stories, isn't it? You're close. 47 feet. <laughs> 47. <laughs> hey, I was close. close. It's been like <laughs> it's been like 15 years. Yeah, you're good for 15 years ago. I love that. Uh, yeah, two questions and you're batting 500. That's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> we were joking a little bit about that during the break too, Bill. The number of locals that have worked at Lorraine Caverns for generations is yeah. unique in and of itself too. It is. We have a lot of people who have worked here and their families have worked here for a long time. My dad worked here for 50 years. And so I'm carrying on that tradition. I've been here 20. I was telling you during the break that growing up, my mother was claustrophobic. So caverns weren't really something that were on our bucket list of vacations. And you were telling me that you get asked that a lot from people who also suffer from claustrophobia. We do. People call in and ask, I'm claustrophobic. Can I do the caverns? My response is the caverns is a very large place. The narrowest spot in the caverns is about the size of a door frame, and it runs for about 500 feet. If you can walk through a door frame for a few yards, you can do it. The upside, too, is even if you're coming with your family or a group of friends or work or any of that sort of stuff, you don't have to do the caverns because you've got a half a dozen other things there <laughs> on the property that people can enjoy while they're there. It's really true. It's a great value included in the caverns ticket. Not only do you get the cavern self-guided tour and access to all the caverns, you also get access to the Luray Valley Museum, the Shanto Heritage Village Complex, and the Car and Carriage Caravan Museum. So that's all included in the general admission ticket. When was all of that stuff added? Because it's been there for some of those things have been there for quite some time. The Car and Carriage Caravan Museum was built in 1957 and has been open since then. And then the Shando Heritage Village with the Luray Valley Museum was opened in 2010. It is a nice complex and you can spend half a day, a full day, you come back and do the things the next day, any way you want to do it, but it's great to... And there are a lot of people, my husband included, who are really interested in, when you talk about the Car and Caravan Museum, he loves to go and look at those kinds of things. What kind of stuff do you have on display there? Oh gosh, we've got so many great cars. We have 1898 Benz, which is actually the oldest operating car in America. It still runs. It's very unique. It was before Mercedes and Benz got together. So that's a pretty unique car. One of my favorites is the 1928 Mercedes. That thing is beautiful. I just fantasize about driving that down the street one day. I would just love that. There's carriages. There's an electric vehicle. We have a Baker Electric, which before Tesla, there were electric cars, which is fascinating to think about in this day of everything going to electric vehicles. You should have Jay Leno come and shoot an episode of his garage, his car show there at the museum. We would love that. <laughs> if you know Jay, tell him to come on. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Shenandoah Heritage Village yes. is like the coolest thing because it is as close to stepping back in time, getting in a time machine as you can get here in the Shenandoah Valley. 
It's really true. It's a recreated 19th century farming community. The Germans settled this area before the English. They came down from Pennsylvania. So we really have a German culture here in the valley. So this museum kind of highlights from the Native Americans to the German coming down through the valley and all that history. And it's very fascinating to see. And then the buildings are wonderful to look at. There's a Dunkard Church where Civil War soldiers camped out. So you can still see their autographs or graffiti, I guess, on the walls. And we're doing research trying to track down all those folks and give a little bit more history for them. I had Kevin Walker from Shenandoah Valley Battlefields Foundation on the show a couple of weeks ago, right before Christmas. He Mm -hmm. was talking a little bit about the German settlements that we had throughout the Shenandoah Valley. He said that, and I didn't know this, but because of that, the Shenandoah Valley tended to decorate for Christmas much sooner than other parts of Virginia. And we had real trees where a lot of people across the country didn't put up a Christmas tree at all. Wow, fascinating. That is just great. See, I've learned something here. I'm trying to spread the knowledge. (laughs) I love it. I love it. That is wonderful. So tell me about the garden maze, because I could see myself maybe wanting to get my husband lost in there for at least a couple hours. (laughs) I certainly get lost in there every time I go in for a photo shoot or anything we're doing down there. I'm always like, someone help me. It seems like the kids can do it a lot faster. It's a large hedge maze, one of the largest on the East Coast. It covers a half a mile of pathway. You just try to find your way through. There are four stations located in the maze that kind of spell out the theme of the maze. You take a picture with your phone, and if you capture all that at the very end, you'll get the theme of the maze. But it is a lot of fun. There's a little observation deck, so once you make it there, you can look out over the maze and try to find your way out. It is so much fun. I always encourage families to do it or let their kids do it because it will burn off a lot of energy for that car ride home. No kidding. (laughs) And everything that so far that you have described sounds like like an Instagram dream, quite frankly. (laughs) True. We are an Instagram paradise here. You can definitely fill up your feed here at Lorraine Cavern. (laughs) And then you mentioned during the break something about ropes. Yes, we have a rope adventure park, which is a three-level ropes course. It's not a zip line, but you get harnessed in and you're put on this little track and there are all these obstacles you try to maneuver. It's great for team building, gets you out of your comfort zone. We all did it here at the caverns when they first opened and it was so much fun. We had a blast doing it. And I think if you're not afraid of heights, go for it. (laughs) I'm picturing something like being a real life person in a video game like Super Mario Brothers or something. It's really like that. It's really like that. And you see kids, little kids up there just having a ball. So that's wonderful. So speaking of little kids, although I'm guessing that you probably have as many adults that enjoy this as kids, the Toy Town Junction? Yes, it's a massive toy display we acquired a few years ago from a local minister who had a toy display, lots of antique toys, and he wanted a home for them after he was gone. So we worked with him and put out this massive display of trains, Playmobil toys. There's just something from every era. And very fascinating to think what people enjoyed way back then to what we enjoy now. So it's it's good. And kids like to see it. I think the, the parents enjoy showing their kids these things that they used to play with, for sure. And I can just imagine the befuddled look on these kids that are like, wait, that doesn't have a screen. How did you play with that? <laughs> exactly. exactly. What is this thing called play that you speak of? Because if you can't hold it and stare at it, then it doesn't work. <laughs> if I can't click on it, what's the point? And Edison, I would imagine from a tourism perspective, you get a lot of people that come to the visitor center that are there to see Luray Caverns and then want to do other things, or they're there because they're there for a wedding and maybe they didn't even know that the caverns existed. It's a really great spot for you to be able to send anybody if they're looking for something to do for a day or even a couple hours. Especially in the winter or when it's really rainy outside and people can't go hiking or do stuff outdoors. The Ray Caverns is always one of the first places we recommend because it's not just your tour into the caverns. You get so much else with it. For the value, you can't beat it. You really can. And rainy days often work for us. I don't mind a rainy day when they come off the Skyland Drive and Shandon National Park and come into our parking lot. That's a great thing. I say we're the natural part of D.C. We're so close. We're about 90 minutes from D.C. And once you've seen all the monuments and done all that, come out and see the natural monuments. Come to see Luray Caverns and the Shenandoah National Park. 
And I think it is outstanding that you guys as a family have owned it and operated it, kept it as close to real as it was when it was discovered, have added things that really tie in to what you already have there. You are a great steward of, I think, the caverns and Luray Page County in general. Well, thank you. We definitely try and preservation is one of our top goals, if not the top. And education, really trying to educate the public on what a cave is and how it's formed and all those things. And we live in a beautiful natural environment out here in, in Luray and with the mountains and the river, it's just a perfect compliment. So tell me one more time before we wrap up, what are the hours? Sure. During the winter months, we're open from nine until four, Monday through Friday, and nine until five on the weekends. And then that'll change in April to go to nine to six. And then in the summer, we're from nine until seven. So we have a wide variety of hours here. And then you mentioned your ticket price includes the cavern and several other things. Can you ballpark what ticket prices are for me? Sure. The ticket price currently is $32 each for adults. That's ages 13 and above. And children ages 6 through 12, it's $16. And five and under is free of charge. And the little kids are going to enjoy it so much. They're just going to walk around with their jaws dropped. They will. And lots of families just love it. And we're stroller friendly too. So you can even bring your stroller along too. It's still a rule that if you can carry your dog, you can take it through. Yes, you can. We are pet friendly. You can carry your dog through or we uh, allow dogs in strollers or wagons as well. So bring your pet. See, I remember stuff. You do. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> the important stuff when it comes to who can get in and who can't exactly just the dogs that's all just the dogs just yeah dogs. that's all we're worried about don't bring your parakeets or any of that kind of thing <laughs> no people when i worked there there was a guy who brought no lie his parrot on a tour he had him on a leash and he sat on his shoulder I wouldn't and, okay, well, on a leash makes it a little more. A little bit, yeah. A parrot flying down, a parakeet down there. I don't think that would work. Right. I can't even imagine. And people would be like, what is that noise? I keep hearing a bird. <laughs> so true. Bill, where can people go get more information, buy tickets, any of that sort of thing? Can they do that from your website? They can. It's LorayCaverns.com. We have time ticketing now, so you can preserve your time. You can come here and purchase tickets on site. We never sell out. You can always join a tour to go through the caverns or gain entry to the caverns um, during operating hours. So either online or in person, either way works. And then I would imagine you're on all of the social medias because you've got the perfect content to put on any of them. <laughs> Yes, we are. And we're getting ready to start our TikTok channel pretty soon this month, which we've been working on, but haven't quite launched yet. So we'll be on TikTok as well. So yeah, TikTok's a little more complicated. It's not as easy as it looks when you're looking at these videos. <laughs> yeah, then you can scroll forever, but to do it is a different right. thing. And Edison, if people want more information about things to do in and around Luray Page County, what is your web address? Visit LurayPage.com. We have itineraries, a bunch of different info about the area, as well as an events calendar of things going on. Thank you both for taking some time to chat with me today. I do appreciate it. My pleasure. Anytime. It's always a joy, Jane. <laughs> I will be back tomorrow. Brand new episode, as always, of The Valley today, a few minutes afternoon. So meet me here then.